Okay, I think we'll get started. Uh, so today is a preliminary lab, uh, and if you've taken the PIC kit uh, 10F or the PIC 10F200 course, or if you are familiar with MP Lab and the PIC kit 5 and how to get a get that programming and everything going, then you can skip this lab and just go on to the first lab of this sequence. Uh, but if not, it might be good to go through this uh, and just get an LED to blink. You know, that's the standard hello world type um, program programming f equivalent for microcontrollers. So we're gonna learn about starting a project in MP Lab uh, uh, using the mic, uh, the PIC kit, uh, GPIO registers, the TRIS register, changing from the different um, register banks in the in the PIC kit, uh, and then uh, uh, configuration bits, some of the some of the other things that are sort of the preliminary stuff that's always going to happen uh, for any of these. So let's get going on that. I think uh, to start with, I will go uh, to where we can see um, our. <coughs> project board here. I've got the Picket 5 ready to go. And uh, and then we've got MP Lab up here. I think as a, as a starting point, I'll just go through the, the circuit here very quickly. Uh, I, I tend to make a lot of wiring mistakes, so I like to set up a template uh, right away to make sure that everything is is um, good and in shape uh, in terms of connecting to the right pins on the chip, especially connecting that then to the PIC kit 5, which is certainly uh, not cheap, If uh, so you don't want to uh, smoke it in any way. So what I've got set up here is uh, a, I'm going to plug in the power supply. This is just coming, just 5 volt power supply coming from a USB. And that's on this rail and this rail, ground here, um, 5 volts here, and then the opposite here. So uh, ground outside here, or sorry, ground inside here, and then 5 volts outside there. Now if we look at our microcontroller, the first pin here is the 5 volt VDD, and this is the ground VSS. Then these are the various input pins. They are also the pins uh, to which the PIC kit 5 writes. And so I've got a little uh, cheat sheet here that has the uh, PIC kit 5 pins, and you can find, uh, I would definitely suggest getting that online. Uh, and then looking in the data sheet here, you can then connect the correct, um, you know, clock pins and so on to the um, microcontroller. Okay, um, so I think that's that's good with the preliminary wiring. That's all you would need. I've got this resistor and this LED here in place for our circuit that we actually want to see, which is the the blinking circuit. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, work on getting a program started. So we go to File, New Project, and I'll just call this Blink uh, 1. And, whoops, sorry, uh, my mistake here, cancel. Uh, new Project, and we want to go Microchip Embedded, Standalone, and, and then it'll be a standalone project. So Microchip Embedded, and then just hit Next. Then we need to choose our um, families. If One nice feature, if you go to recently used, it, it'll find it for you, uh, the ones you've recently used. We are in the um, mid-range here, so we go here and then we can just type in pick uh, 12F675, uh, and there it is. And then for the tool option, uh, you should see your pick kit 5 if that's plugged in properly into your USB. And, and recognize. So um, that's presuming that's that's all good, then you're ready to go here. And then you'll just click next. We won't use a debugger here, so you can just press none. We do need to pick up, we're gonna program in assembly. Certainly you could program in C, but all of the stuff that I'm doing in this these sequences will be in assembly. So we will choose our assembler and hit next. And then here's where we put the project name, Blink. Uh, we'll call this Blink1, and we'll go ahead and finish. And all this uh, sort of directory structure comes up. We want to go into the source files, hit New, Assembly File, and then we'll call this Main. And so that will create a main.s file, 
in this um, setup. Okay, um, now let now what we do is we uh, need to set up for set up what is called the configuration bits. So we go to window. Um, target memory views, and we'll go to configuration bits. And down here, we can change things. So we want to change uh, this to off. I think we want the M and clear to off. And we want the brownout detect off. And I think that's good. And then you can hit generate source code. And what you can do here is copy this in. So let me make sure. Um, Okay, I'm gonna we can we can copy this. I'm gonna cheat a little and just copy in my whole program so you don't need to watch me type, but we'll confirm here that we have this right. Okay, yeah, here's um, this is default to uh, an external clock, which we don't have. We have an internal clock. So in configuration bits up at the top, that's one I missed here. You want to go to internal uh, C CIO. Okay. All right, so this will always be the same then for all the stuff that we're doing. Also coming along is this include file, and uh, this include this is going to be the same regardless of what microcontroller you're using. If you watch some older videos where they're working with an older version of MPLAB, then you do have to find the specific include file for that microcontroller. But conveniently now, um, it's just this XS, XC include. This bit here, this is or this uh, little bit of code here, is always going to be the same as well. Uh, this is just to um, set the program time, uh, counter and uh, you know tell it where to start with the main program uh, upon starting and upon reset and so on. So this will always be the same. Then uh, I like to set things up so that there's a main pro the main program uh, and anything that just gets changed once so like setting all the pins and stuff that will happen there and then the actual program that the microchip continuously undergoes then is in main loop and then you can call programs that are outside of that main loop so this will be a good example of of all of that okay so let's work through this um, the stat the fifth bit on the status register is what tells us what bank we're on so uh, if we change that to a zero so bit clear the fifth bit then we're going to be on bank zero uh, just as a good measure i always clear the gpio i don't know if that's necessarily important or not uh, it might just clear itself automatically but i always do that uh, then this is this is interesting. We have to actually set the comparator, and I'm going to go to the data sheet here now. And um, this is on I think page 37. Yeah, 37. Uh, and well, first I'll show you 35 here. So this is the the bits for the CCOM register, and it's this last three that set the uh, comparator pins uh, where they should be. And we don't want to use that for a comparator. We want just digital input outputs. So if you turn here now to page uh, 37, so hopefully you can follow along here in case you can't see this very well. Uh, if we look here in this one, 111, the last three bits, change these all the digital inputs and it does not use the comparator. And so we write this binary in that form. So this one one ones are turning those all the digital inputs, and we move that to the CMCOM. Then we change the status to bank two, and we have to do a similar thing for the analog to digital register, the ANCEL register. And here, what we want to do is just set everything to zero, and uh, move that into the ANCEL register. Now, finally, we want to move things into the Tris I/O that tell us what we need our pins to do, and this is what you'll probably change the most. Uh, when we use the comparator, we'll also change this, and obviously, when we use the uh, analog digital, we'll change that. But for digital input output, this will all be the same. But then this might change depending on what you want here. And so, if you have zeros in these pins, and there's five pins here, uh, you. You, if you have a zero, they'll be set as an input, uh, as an output, and a one will be set as an input. 
uh, GP3, which is the fourth one over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, is always only an input, so that can only act as an input. And that's fairly typical of these microcontrollers. But 5, 4, 2, 1, and 0 can all act um, either as inputs or outputs. So the way we have it set here, everything is an output except for GP3. Now if I wanted GP0 to be an input, I would just change that to 1. Okay, 0. Then this literal is moved to the working register on this step, and then in this step that is moved into the TRIS I.O. And then finally we're going to go back to bank 0 so that we get to our GPIO pin, which is what we'll be using down here. Now we enter the main loop, and um, uh, if you haven't worked with a delay before, so if this is, this is like your first programming here, a delay loop is really important, and uh, that is something that there's several ways to do this. This is not necessarily the best way for sure. It works pretty well for um, times that are that you want to see with LEDs, so tenth of a second to ten seconds. Uh, we can move a decimal number into the working directory. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is turn on pin 2, and as we look over here, pin 2 is this one, and that if that's on, it's going to turn on the LED. Then we're going to send uh, <clears throat> the decimal number 65 to the working register. That is going to be stored then in three different um, memory addresses or memory registers, B0, B1, and B2. These are just memory registers. And the number 65 will be stored in there. And this is a three-fold nested loop. So 65 down to 0, then that changes the next one down from 65 to 64, then that goes to 65 to 0, then it goes to 63, and so on. So then when that second loop goes down to 0, that changes this to 64, and so on. So basically, uh, roughly speaking, not, not, not exactly, but roughly speaking, this is about 65 uh, cubed delays, uh, a delay of 65 cu cubed um, cycles of the microcontroller. And so it will be on for that long, which uh, will be about uh, it's a little over a second, I think. And then we'll take the same, so we'll have a symmetric on off, uh, and we will delay 65 again when it's off, so bit clear the, G, the pin. And then that will just keep going through this loop forever. All right, so that's the program. Uh, and so let's try to run it here. So first thing we want to do is build it, make sure it builds okay, and it builds okay. Now we are going to um, put the PIC microcontroller here, and it looks like it's working, and it is. I'm going to actually ch uh, change this now to a 25 so that we see a difference. Uh, that's just because this microcontroller was already programmed with this program. But we're going to rewrite this now. Now we're going to uh, push this to the microcontroller, but we're going to get an error here, so let's see that happen. And the error is that, well, first this alert <coughs> tells us you're about to send 5 volts. Uh, you might be sending 5 volts to your microcontroller. If your microcontroller can't handle that, uh, do you want to continue? But this can hold, handle 5 volts, so we'll hit OK. But then we'll say the we got this error down here, the target board needs its own power supply. And so you have two choices when you're working with the PIC kit. You can power the chip with the PIC kit, which I like to do on the programming, or you can power with the power supply. So let's just power with the power supply first, and um, we will run this now. We won't get an error. And because we changed this delay, we should see this go faster now once it's all the way through. And so we, we see now a faster blinky, blinker here. Okay. Well, let's, let's fix this because when we get on to some of our other projects, we are definitely going to want to not have the pick kit, pick, and the power together. And I found, I kind of learned the hard way that when you have an input to an analog pin that's set to analog and you have your pick kit, you can very often get the, the microcontroller to get very hot. So something is definitely wrong there. So let's, let's set this up so that the PIC kit actually powers this during the programming. So we click on settings here. I'm going to redo that so you can see that. We're going to click over here on settings and then 
um, we'll choose the picket 5 and then we'll choose a power and then we'll click this button here and hit apply and so then we'll say okay now when we run this <coughs> we will not get the error we will supply and we get a flashing and just for good measure let's do a uh, long on and a short off just to redo that and we see we have control of the flashing here all right so then to summarize uh, the, all this is going to be the same all the time uh, throughout this whole lab sequence this is stuff that just happens once through the program we will fiddle around with these as we work with the comparator feature, the analog to digital feature, uh, and then the main loop is where we'll be programming stuff. All right, so that's it for this video.